this a little quickly for the few people that are here is, in the back on the camera, sitting in the seat, is Jillian, one of the hey, school's administrative assistants. She's definitely a graduate. She also has private practice and does about 17 million other things. She's, <laughs> she's awesome. She's awesome. Also in the awesome category is Grace, who's manning the Facebook phone here. Grace is also part of the school administration, also has a private practice. We're all together in our private practice. And Grace graduates in March. So she's like, I know. She I is know. Like and so I great. don't think that we could be moving forward as well as we do without the two of them. They are amazing and they are definitely allow me to lean into my more creative spirit because they handle so much of what is, you know, all of this kind of stuff that I have no idea. <laughs> Not, and I don't want to know. So, so there, there you go. There you go. And it truly does allow me to sort of springboard. So let's talk a little bit. Of, let's not a little, Let's talk about the school. Let's talk about the you know what you came here to listen to. Well, it's so funny. This morning I was driving somewhere, and I stopped um, my car. And it it like when I stopped for a second, I thought to myself, seriously, I thought like how long have I been driving. You know, I was doing one of those deals. And I was like, wow, 50 years, you know. And and then I started thinking about how I le learned the rules of the road, where that actual education came from and stuff. And then, of course, it took me over to the bodywork side of everything. And it took me over, because I was like, wow, that's five decades that I've been driving. And then I was like, wow, it is almost well, I didn't think of it exactly this way, but I'll say it this way. It's almost four decades that I've been doing body work. And then I was thinking about, see, this is how my mind works, guys, so just get used <laughs> to this. If you do decide to join the, join, join the training, is that, and then I was thinking about, so, so this is my 37th year in this, but I was thinking about when it really turned into, from, from being something that was me just working on bodies to me having a deeper, more connected, bigger understanding. Because there is an element, and then for anybody watching as well, is that there is an element of, am I too old to do this work or to start this work, right? Am I too old? And we have had people in their 70s in the training. We've had people in the, in the 60s in the training. Come on in and come sit. Just, we'll have you sign in later. Go ahead and, why don't you find a seat? I'm going to do a totally different door. Sorry. Oh, yeah. no, that's okay. We Welcome. Have a couple of, we have a couple of doors here. But so, I, <laughs> yeah. strip mall. so anyway, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about, you know, I, although I started this in this journey, well, you know, I probably started at the minute I walked right out of the womb and started <laughs> walking and probably, you know, talking, is that, <clears throat> but I started the journey when I was 30, but the thing about it is, is that I didn't really start the journey until I was about 40, the, my late 40s, is when it really turned around. So personally, I don't think you're ever too old to start this journey, to do this, as long as you have, you know, an interest in learning, you know, a willingness to do some study. It's not huge. The study is not huge. The more you put into it, the more you actually get out of it. So I just wanted to sort of say those few things because, you know, I'm 66 right now and there's, you know, I'm definitely not slowing down. And, it, you know, and the interesting thing is, is I feel like as the years progress, I'm changing, I feel like I'm changing all the time anyway. You know what I mean? So there's no like being static. Oh, I'm here and that's that. So why don't you come in, just jump. Hi. Hi. That's okay. Just grab a seat right there. So anyway, just wanted to put those few things out to say it like that. So now, let's actually talk about the program and about all of the Ancrum Institute stuff. <clears throat> so what is it that makes Ancrum Institute so different? It is a different school than any other, okay? And maybe every school can say that. But I'll definitely say it about ours, is that, or mine, is that it's very different than any other school anywhere in the world. So that the inclusiveness of so much different information and different, a different viewpoint, a paradigm shift in the way you look at the body and the way you approach helping somebody to heal, okay? There is, a, there is an approach to helping somebody to heal. 
So my, my training, one learned, I always talk like you're already all in the training already, so just to go with me on that, all right? So you're all just part of it, so we're going to talk that way. Is that one thing that happens over the two, the two plus years, it's two years, two months long training is, is that yes, I am absolutely, myself and the assistants, are absolutely going to be teaching all sorts of techniques for every single part of the body. There isn't any part of you that does not have, we don't, that we don't teach treatments for, whether it's for TMJ, whether it's for stuff going on with your eyes, whether it's for somebody who has incontinence, whether it's for the, the, it is great what it is that you're going to, that one learns. So there are a lot of techniques within the training, but that, but this is not a technique-driven institute. This is an institute that's driven on principles. And there's that old saying, and I wish we would get another saying so I could stop saying the saying, <laughs> which is, you know, feed a man a fish and he eats for a night, right? <laughs> Teach a man to fish and he eats for his life. So we are teaching you the critical thinking, that sort of quantum expansion of how you look at something so that you can actually start to help somebody at the more core issues that they have. So instead of, <clears throat> instead of oh, here's my symptom, I'm going right to the symptom, right? I want to look for what is driving that symptom. So let's talk about a few thoughts, that, you know, or some things that I have, come on, there it goes, okay, is that, so, one of the deals is, is that I could have pain somewhere, and let me tell you something, most of the time where someone has their pain is not the origin of the pain, and most medical, I shouldn't say all, but most medical systems, whether it's also including PT, whether it's also including chiropractic, it's including all these other modalities, massage therapy, they are focusing on where's your symptom. Which is why that if I work on your symptom, you are coming back next week for me to work on your symptom again and again. Now, financially, if you're a nervous person, that's kind of good business, isn't it? That I've got you coming back every week and all that kind of stuff, especially within this field. <clears throat> but that's not the way, that's not my belief, and it's not the way in which I teach, nor the way in which I work, is that I am trying to help you so that you don't need help. We want to help someone back to help. I, and fix is a word I never use, I don't like it, I start off the training by saying, don't even say it to me. <laughs> because fixing is a big ego, has a big ego on it that says, I know what you need. But in reality, one of the big things about the Institute, one of the first, one of the first bodies of principles that I teach you is that the treatment plan for that body, for that day, is in the body. So the treatment plan is in the body, and our role as the teachers in school is also to teach you not only the anatomy, not only the techniques for the area, but also how to begin to learn and understand how you read a treatment plan in a body. That is part of the deal is, so if the treatment plan is there, or there, or there, or there, how do I know what the treatment plan is? So over the two years, two months, that is one of the things that we are doing is we are teaching you sort of a, you know, quali you know qualitative thinking so that, and we teach you how to look at the body, we teach you how to test the body, all of those things that begin to tell you, that really begin to tell you how the treatment plan, how to begin to read the treatment plan. Plus which, throughout the entire training, Ad nauseum, as I am <laughs> teaching, I will say over and over again things like, uh, you know, I'll give you an example because I'll give you an example. I'll talk about this more when I get into the slides in a second. But here's a perfect example: is is that if the liver is congested, and most everybody in here doesn't realize it, but they either have the beginnings or they have a good amount of congestion in the liver. It's just the nature of how much toxicity we live in. Okay, how much toxicity we live in. The typical, typical pain patterns for the liver is pain in the right shoulder, pain in the right neck, right neck, right, right, that's <laughs> You're the right, right neck, right. <laughs> right neck, is pain in the right neck, 
and a certain kind of hip pain. That is classic liver congestion patterns. So if I only work your shoulder and I don't work your liver, then what happens is, is you're coming back for shoulder pain again. How many times are you going to give me working your shoulder without working what the cause, the core issue is, or the, you know, the, the origin of it is? How many times are you going to give me, you know, me working your shoulder, me working your shoulder, me working your shoulder? Like, I don't even want to do that. That's really boring. That's really boring. I get, just don't like it. Okay, so there's many systems in the body. So there's lots of systems in the body, and you can have your core issue in any of the systems. So let me just run through the systems for you. So what you saw was the muscles and the skeleton. So the musculoskeletal system. And yes, you can have something be or originating in the musculoskeletal system, but most of the time it's not. So what I often say is that your, the pain in your muscles, in the musculoskeletal system, is actually a map that you follow to somewhere else. Because I just gave you an example, didn't I? I just said that the liver, which lives right over here, the liver lives here, gives you pain over here. Okay? So, if I know the maps of the pain patterns from other things, then that, then because I, I know the maps now, then what I do is I go in and try to prove myself wrong or right. That's what you're doing. So I have this curiosity. So you have pain in your right shoulder. You didn't fall. You didn't do too, lift too many weights. You didn't do, like you didn't have a car accident that hit on the right side. So if you don't, so you, like by a process of elimination, if I don't have anything that went directly there, then I'm looking, I'm going to check your liver, okay? So the musculoskeletal system tends to be the system that is the map of your symptoms. But most, your, most of the clients are like, but wait a minute, it's here, but wait a minute. So, you know. Of course, you got to work that too to like appease somebody or get rid of what happened as a result of having the liver go on for so long. It's going to create a locked up pattern. So I have to unlock this pattern, but that's after I unlock this pattern. So musculoskeletal system is one system, and there are many more systems than I'm going to actually talk about. Okay. Just add some more muscles. One of the big systems in the body is fascia. Fascia is connective tissue. Fascia is everywhere. And there's three layers of fascia in the body. And if I could, there's a superficial layer, and if I could peel your skin off, you would still be there. The fascia is there, okay? It's everywhere. And fascia is a connected, is a connective tissue this is a super, super, super close um, slide of it, and it just shows that it's webbed and it actually has, it's a bit fluid. Fascia has a middle layer that is around everything in your body, except for a few nerve, some of the unmyelinated nerves. So fascia is everywhere. It's around everything. It just has a different name in the different places. So fascia that's around my kidneys are called re is called renal fascia. Fascia that's around my organ is well, it's must you know they they just oh yeah, yeah. Okay. is that fascia that's around my muscles is called something else. Fascia that's around my bone is called the peri is periosteum. Fascia around my heart is pericardium, like we know. So one of the deals is is that you have fascia layers and layers of it throughout the body, and Fascia is something so amazing because I grew into this field as a massage therapist, so everything was muscle, and every reason you had trouble was a muscle. I mean, it was muscle, 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 muscle for all those first years, and then I began to deepen in and learn more and really understand that your muscles are such a, they're such a low on the, on the totem pole. They're very low on the totem pole of, of like helping you and what's really going on in the body. Is Muscles are kind of dumb. They only go off and on. 
fascia itself being everywhere. And the deepest layer of fascia we're going to see as part of around the brain and spinal cord, which I'll show later, is that also, here's the deal. Your fascia, okay, so it helps you with structure, support, protection, and absorb shocks hemodynamic processes and defense, well, and this, all of these mean that your fascia is actually has communication through it. Hormones, chemicals, it has also pressure capacities. So it has biochemical processes. So my fascia is a communicating system and it runs everywhere in my body. Okay, It is a massive communication system. I began to go, wow, to the fascia guides, you know, probably about 15 years ago. I was like, man, did I miss it, you know, but I had to come up through the ranks the way I came. You, if you start this program, you're just getting it all over the next couple. You're getting everything it took me all these years to get. Okay. So, and then fascia is interconnected. So it's, this is just out of a book by an Italian who wrote on fascia. It's just showing that my respiratory diaphragm is connected to the fascia around my heart, which is connected to the fascia around my lungs, which is connected to my back and around my organs and my pelvic floor. It is connected. That's why somebody can touch you one place and you feel it all the way someplace different. Right? Mm -hmm. That is one of the reasons is because there's this big interconnection with fascia. So the fascial system could be one that actually has the issue in it that's making me feel it in a muscle. Okay? Everybody good so far? We're okay? Okay. Okay. So, here's the deal. Is that my, the, the I, so, how, how many years in? 15 years in, as a massage therapist, I decided to go and become an, os, an osteopath. And I actually was going to, thinking I was going to become a doctor, so I looked at the school here twice, and then I started towards it, doing all the prereqs and everything, and then somebody told me about a school in Canada, and um, so this is very me. You guys don't know me well, but if you come to school, you will. Very me. I picked up the phone. Okay, you got to realize this. This was 2003. This was, it, this was not now. Now, oh God, how much it's changed. It's unbelievable. So it was 2003. I picked up the phone. I called the school up in Canada. I got somebody. We, we talked for an hour, and she said, fax me your resume. So we didn't have faxes on your on your your printers then. I went over to the mailboxes, etc., around the corner from my house and faxed that sucker up. And then she called me back and said, okay, you're in, like 15 minutes later. So I started my journey then going up to Canada. This was in, so this is for the people who are out of town. I want you to know that I have done a tremendous, tremendous amount of my studying away, like traveling. So I traveled every six weeks up to Vancouver from here in Tulsa. I was living in Tulsa at that, by then. And um, anyway, and so, but I want you to know that my program is two years and two months long. You come once every other month. We'll talk about that. But I want you to know that I went every six weeks to Vancouver for five years. And had I known that's what it was going to be, I did not know when I went. I, I went up there. I was like talking to the woman for an hour. We were like, oh, hey, hey. You know, we were having a great time. And then I got up to school and I found out tests every time you went and papers at the end of the year and five years of doing this and but still I, pers I persevered and I went but the point of the story was not only to say that obviously I traveled for five years to get this piece of my education because I had actually done other things I closed my practice, spent two and a half months in Boulder, Colorado studying fascia, that's the first time I studied fascia back in 97 and just closed up my practice and went there and lived in somebody's house for two and a half months and, you know, I did those kinds of things for years. I don't do it anymore, but I did it then. And, um, but the owner, the man who was, an, who was a DO and he was French from, from France, put together this next piece and said that fascially, fascially, we are connected down the middle of our entire body. And this shows that from the top of my head, into the middle of my head, into the back of my throat, including my heart, part of my liver, including the small intestines, and the pelvic floor, 
is connected. So I am connected fascially from here to here, like connected from the top of my head to the pelvic floor. I am connected. This is another system. This is another system that includes, it includes the back of my throat. So isn't this interesting? You think about this. So I don't know that we use this as a, uh, we'll use this as a, an example, like how many systems get affected when something happens to you. But if you have a whiplash in a car, right? So you're in, you have an MVA, uh, you have a car accident, and you get a whiplash. And what's the, what does everybody think the biggest thing that gets whiplashed, right? What's the, yes, exactly, your neck, right? Everybody thinks it's the neck. So if I only go with the fact that my neck is what gets hit in a whiplash, ha, ha, ha. But if, that, but if that's what I think, that my neck is the only thing, so here's my neck, right here. So if my neck got it in this whiplash, do you think that everybody else went, well, the heart went, oh, I'm just so sorry that that happened to you, right? I'm just so sorry. You know, you don't think that everything, that everything got pulled all the way through this system. This is one of the problems of why when somebody's getting work done post car accident, post whiplash, one of the problems is, is that they are not looking at the bigger, deeper picture the more expanded picture of what happens. Okay, so this is called the central chain of fascias. And quite often, if there's something, one of the other, well, I won't talk about that yet, because I gotta leave something for the other system, don't I? <laughs> but the interesting thing is, is that you have this list down here, and I don't know who is aware of the chakra system, but in the chakras, this, you get them in the same place. This is the vertex. This is that central part of the brain that we talked about. There's your throat. Here's your heart. Uh -huh. You know, here's your liver. Here's your small intestines. And there's your pelvic floor. So everything has a relationship. They're interrelated. Even these other systems of uh, healing systems. So I just like to put that in there, that these are the energy systems, and they're in they're completely related to this if we superimpose just those words. Okay? So, one of the deals is, is that the, another system, and this is the deepest system of that fascia included. It's included in. This is the cranial sacral system. Okay? And the cranial sacral system is made up of the bones of the head, and then there's layers of this fascia inside that's around your brain and then goes down, I think my next picture shows it, is that so you have fascia that's around the brain and then goes down around the spinal cord and attaches in your low back, in your sacrum. So this is your deepest layer of fascia and it's in the cranial sacral system. So, let's back up to the, to the bones, is so What's our deal here in terms of, like, why is it important to name this as one of the systems? And one of the biggest things about this, and it is going on so badly, I'm talking to each of the cameras, <laughs> so badly in our world today is how much anxiety, how much stress, how everything is so incredibly elevated going on. And one of the deals is, is that puts compressions into my cranial sacral system. The more I'm stressed, okay, the more I'm stressed or the more traumatized I am by something, the more tension I have here, okay? The more tension I have, the more tight the whole system gets. And what's our deal? So why do we care? So why do I care that my head is getting tight? It doesn't necessarily give you headaches. I mean, that could be one, but that's not necessarily one. But the biggest thing about this system that's so important to understand from our, from anybody's standpoint, but especially ours, which is why every single module has cranial sacral being taught, which I'll tell you about, is because the cranial sacral system, the membranes, the bones, and the cerebral spinal fluid 
is your auto, is, is in the physical, is your autonomic nervous system or your auto-regulating system. This system, your autonomic nervous system, runs your heart rate, your ability to sleep. Can you fall asleep? You know, your ability not to sleep. It runs your digestive system. It runs your muscle tone. It runs your immune system. What else does it run? Just in the physical. So in the it, that's the physical. I, I said you've got your digestive system. But the other part is, is that it also runs your anxiety, your worry, your depression, your aggression, your shyness, overwhelm. Too many people, you can't take it. Too much noise, you can't take it. This is all part of this auto-regulating system is overstimulated, and in its overstimulation, right, for whatever reason, it's tightening down and tightening down and tightening down. So here's the other thing is, is that if I have this going on, and I come to you and I go, I have back pain, but I have this, you know, sort of anxiety going on, right? I'm stressed, I also can't sleep, or whatever my symptoms are, because you can have some of the symptoms and not all the symptoms, is then what happens is we as, we as practitioners now understand that this has to get worked first because you cannot change, help somebody to change with a system that's in it, because this turns on the fight or flights. You cannot change a fight or flight system that system's in on guard, and so when I'm on guard, I cannot change. So we cannot help a system that this is going on. So I have to know, I have to be able to switch into a type of work or send somebody for a type of work that's going to help take the fight or flights down. And one of the things that does that is craniosacral therapy which is why it's part of the program. Why it's such a big part of the program. You know, I'll talk about what the curriculum actually looks like after a bit, but we're still hearing the symptoms. <laughs> you all right, everybody? Even though I talked about some of your symptoms that we all have, <laughs> so you gotta have some of them because there's nobody getting out without this stuff because the world is so traumatized right now. The world is, and fear is in there, fear, shy, worry, all of those symptoms, the, all of those are symptoms. They are not who you are. They are what has happened and what is happening to you that's overlaid on you, you know, from trauma, okay? And the trauma can be from outside, the trauma can be from injuries, surgery, the trauma can come from many ways, okay? So that's why we work the cranial sacral system, and we work, learn to work it from the first module to the last module. There is cranial sacral in there, and it is a big learning curve to learn this, because it is, a, it is a, just a big learning curve to learn this, because it isn't about, like, can somebody, you know, can somebody get their hands on and lift a bone or something like that? It's about you have to learn to deepen your perception, soften your, soften yourself. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch of things. Okay, so that's the cranial sacral system. So so far we have musculoskeletal, don't we? We had fascia. Now we had central chain in there as part of the fascia. Now we have the deepest layer of fascia here in the cranial system. My goodness, what other system could there possibly be in the body? But <laughs> hey, we're missing a few still. Oh, look at this, we have fluids, okay? We have fluids, so we have the blood circulating, we have lymphatic fluid, that, and we have cerebral spinal fluid, which we talked about in that cranial sacral system that's running. So blood, when I was in osteopathic school that very first morning of the very first day of the, oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into up in Vancouver, is that, um, they gave you the five the five tenets of osteopathy. And so I do lean into osteopathic principles. But one of them was the artery rule supreme. And so I'm like, okay. You know, you go like this and you write it down. I'm like, the artery rule supreme. And then I went home and I was like, what does that really mean? Like, what does that really mean? It took me actually 
a lot of years to kind of get to where I am with it now, and that it also brought up for me at the time that it doesn't, in the physical, because I also believe there's other aspects of the self, right? But the physical self, any body work you're doing, you're trying to free the fluids. Everybody thinks you're trying to release a muscle. That's not really what you're trying to do. Even if you stay in the muscle, the muscle level, you know, that's not what you're trying to do. It's just that a muscle level is to let the muscle go. What you're trying to do is get the fluid flowing. Because can I live if a muscle doesn't work? Yes, I can. Can I live if the blood doesn't circulate? No. Doesn't a, doesn't a limb die? Doesn't something die without the circulation of the blood? Because the blood is bringing nutrition and oxygen, and it's taking away waste. So it's bringing nutrition and oxygen and taking away waste. So from that way is that we're always trying to get the fluids working. The lymphatic system is the backup system to take away the waste that the blood can't take away. So it's part of your immune system. So we definitely need that working as well, don't we? Cerebrospinal fluid is a whole other story in itself. It circulates around the brain and spinal cord, or in also within the brain, but I won't get into the big explanation about it. Just know that it is a huge part of how your health expresses itself. It is just in there and needs to be circulating. Okay? That's your blood, your lymphatics with your lymph nodes all over the body, your cerebral spinal fluid, which is circulating around the brain and around the spinal cord, just show in there. Okay. The next system we'll talk about, which is one that nobody ever thinks about, nobody puts, nobody even gives it any consciousness, except for, thank goodness I went to my school. I'm so happy I did, really. It was, it was brutal. And I do have to say, I will say this, that I started menopause right when I was going, and oh my God, that was a brutal five years. <laughs> it was terrible to be traveling and have my, you know, pre oh wow, it was ugly. It took me a, it took me a few years to kind of get over be doing that in that phase, you know. So, pressure system. What does that really mean? It means that our bodies are pressurized. Our bodies are pressurized and there's different cavities that we're pressurized in and the pressures are in relationship to each other. So, for an example, what is some of the biggest symptom that comes when the pressures are off in my body? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pain, okay. What's that? Sinus infection. Sinus stuff, great. Pain, yep. Headaches, yep. How about vertigo and dizziness? Those come because the pressures are off. How about that? So it's like, hmm, you know, there's a whole deal. And haven't you ever seen, I'll just do this, and this is probably, and I apologize if any of you guys, if there's any men watching, um, it tends to be women, but if there's any men watching and you have this, is haven't you ever seen the guys with the guts? And then look at how small they look up here. And that means the pressure has gone so great. So you, what you get is two tension, two tension cavities of pressure that's different, okay? This one, the pressure got bigger, right? Like big, big, big. And this got concentrated pressure up here. And this got smaller, right? So you, now you're going to go out there, you're going to start looking at these people, you're going to go, mm, mm, mm. Right? And the deal with that is, is that now what's going to happen? There is, there is pressure on the heart and there is less capacity to breathe. Isn't oxygen and breathing one of our biggest uh, hello life things? Do you know what I'm saying? So that is one of the deals about the pressure system. Now the weird thing is, is that it's, the cavities are split. So we have diaphragms. So anything that is horizontal in the body creates these diaphragms. All the diaphragms are horizontal. Everything else runs up and down. So all my muscles all run up and down. But these guys, this is up here. I'm going to show you a picture. This is up here, my thoracic diaphragm. My respiratory diaphragm, you all know, is over here. My pelvic diaphragm is here, and then the one on the bottom with the weird word, tentorium, is in the middle of my head. 
and attaching to my inner ear stuff. It's in the middle of my head, which is another reason why pressure is so, like, <clears throat> excuse me, why it's so impactful into the vestibular or the balance system that's in the body, okay? So this is showing you pelvic floor, respiratory diaphragm, thoracic diaphragm, and then this one is the middle of the head. That's just showing some extras. But this one shows, this one is missing the one in the head. And it's interesting because this guy bless thinks, you. bless you, Grace, this guy thinks that there are diaphragms in every one of your joints. It's kind of interesting. But our biggies are the pelvic, respiratory, thoracic, and this one that's in the middle of the head. They are in direct relationship to each other. So a diaphragm helps to, when, when the diaphragm is sitting in a relaxed state and working the way it's supposed to, then it is in, it's, it's in relationship to the other and keeps the area like balanced how it should be, okay? But we also have diaphragms like your plantar fascia is a diaphragm. Did you know that? Everybody, what did you think that, you know, it's like, well, you probably never did. Like, I used to, you know, what's, what's the plantar fascia that's on the bottom of your foot? What is that about? Like, what, why, mm -hmm. what is that about? But it is a diaphragm, and it does a number of things. One is to help the fluids pump back up the legs. So there's all sorts of ways to expand your thinking and your view on things, okay? We have a diaphragm in the palm of our hand. We have palmar fascia, that's also a diaphragm. So diaphragms can keep stable the pressure as well as help in many, it does a few, it does a few things in the foot. It does more than just help to pump up. So every time I walk, my plantar fascia is actually, pardon me, acting as a pump for the fluids to move up. Everybody okay so far? We're good? Going home with a lot more information than you ever thought you wanted or not, or <laughs> thought, you'd see, thought you'd hear? Now this is one of my faves, and I am a very unusual school that I teach this. Is that, so you're going to learn diaphragms. So this whole thing about the pressures is part of the program, is learning how to work those diaphragms. Because you need to help balance the pressure, I mean, if, if that's the issue, you, you may think that the issue, so somebody has pain in the shoulders and you look at them and you're like, the gut is like this and this is like this. Well, of course they're going to have pain in the shoulders from the pressure that's going up. So that's, you know, this is also not, we're, it's not just that we're aware that they're there. We are, will be learning. In the program, you'll learn to work these a lot. One of the deals here is, is that the visceral system or the organ system. So about, I don't know what it is, two-thirds, three, three... Module 10. What? Module 10. Module 10 out of 14. So module 10, we start learning organs. It's all listed on that little sheet that you Maybe took from there. That's okay. So, we're gonna, so what happens is we learn how to work organs because here's the deal. I want you to hear this statistic. 65 to 90% of pain in your muscles is coming from organs. 65 to 90 percent. Now that's not Lee Ancrum's thing, statistic. That's a statistic of, there is a French doctor, he's probably, he's in his 80s, he's not probably, he actually is in his 80s. I've never taken a direct course with him, but I've certainly studied from people who have studied with him, and he has, um, He's the one that probably in the 70s came up and started to understand. He's a regular MD, but he came up and started to understand that people were having pain because there was stuff going on in the organ. So how can I help, how can we help somebody who's in pain if I'm not including the organs in this, in this whole system, in my idea of how do I get to the core issue, right? So I've got to be able to, I've got to, be able to do that. So this is a lovely picture of the kidneys. This is all the other organs. The kidneys are in very close to your back. They're in close to your back. And I'll tell you this, kidneys are almost all the time somebody who has low back pain, it's kidneys. Almost all the time somebody who has low back pain is kidneys. And there's a whole thing about the kidneys that we talk about when we get to the kidney class about 
dehydration and all the rest of that stuff. So there is that. So this is so a part of low back pain. Well, I always find this interesting, so let's do a little fun thing here. Is So this is somebody's, obviously these are the lungs, and this is the heart. So here's the deal, is that this is somebody's liver, okay? And the small intestines here, and this is their stomach. So you guys don't know this, and this comes up when we, when we do the, uh, I don't know, remember if this is in the slideshow. This stomach is so distended. It is so distended. It's not even funny. Because this stomach should be about this size. This is how big this stomach should be. So it is so distended. It even has different color here than it is there. Which means that this person was inflamed and eating things that were inflaming and distending the stomach. Okay? And so I would... so. Your liver, so here's the liver on the right-hand side, okay? How the liver goes, the liver has two lobes. This is your smaller lobe, right? Hoo ha 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 hoo. This is the smaller lobe. So my liver should look like this. This, this lobe, that you cannot see right there, should be to right here. And then this lobe should be over here. So you have a combination of the biggest lobe of the liver is teeny. I don't even, you can't even almost, you can't even see it over here. It's so small. This person was in such bad dysfunction, so bad, in so many ways, so much dysfunction. So I don't know, we don't know if that's what caused the distension of the stomach is because the liver was not digesting and doing, the liver was not doing its processes and Remember, once again, this guy has, so here's the thing. Here's this thing, you guys, is that, see how big the stomach is? Look at how high this person's shoulder is. Mm -hmm. So the pressure of the stomach doing this pushed that shoulder really high. Can you see that? So if I was a PT or a chiropractor or a doctor and I'd just go, oh, look, he has a high shoulder or a low shoulder. Who knows what they pick? Then you have to go. Which one is the one that's in dysfunction? Is it the one that's high or is it the one that's low? Right? And this is a pressure issue. That this one high, this is probably where the, this person was in pain all over because this is not good. But they probably had more pain right here because the pressure of this pushed that shoulder up so badly. You will learn to be able to feel what the stomach should feel like and the liver. I mean, that's part of the program. Part of the program after Module 10. Module 10 is the stomach. Module 10 is the stomach, and this is the small intestines, and here's, here's the large intestine right here. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's Module 10. But that's pretty crazy, isn't it? There's all sorts of pain patterns happening right there from what we can even see in this cadaver. Okay. Then you have an electromagnetic field. Everybody's got, everything's got an electromagnetic field. And if your field is off, one of the biggest things that messes with our field are, is 5G and all the phones and all the everything that we're on all the time. It's a big one. It's a very big one. Um, hopefully you have stuff that is preventing that or you're wearing or carrying some things that are mitigators for the for the all the G's and you got one and Grace has got one, Jillian's got I'm wearing one. I've got it on my crazy one on my phone. There's all sorts of things. If the, we have there's something plugged in somewhere so while you're here you're actually protected in this room. I have something in my office, in my house, in my bedroom. You know what I mean? It there's it is really big. And the big the big interrupters so 5G is interrupting our own system. Our, and look at how the system is looking like it's emanating out of the heart, right? So we have these electromagnetic fields. And one of the things is your heart is an electrical organ, which is why you're hearing about so many people having dysregulated heart. Arrhythmias and tachycardia and bradycardia and high, you know my heart's beating high and everything like that. Well, the first thing I always recommend to somebody is now you got to get everything protected in order to start getting that to come down. So there is that element that's going on. So it's in the field here, and it's not like we're going to take down 
the arrhythmia in the heart, we have to help the person get educated to say, you need to protect yourself, you, there's some things that need to happen, okay? But this is a field as well, and balancing this back, you know, helping to balance. But you can't balance, like you're with somebody, I'm with somebody, I tend to see people at, uh, once a month. If you're seeing me regularly, you're seeing me once a month usually, for a while until you're until you feel like you're well enough and good to go. But <clears throat> the deal is, I'm with you one hour. What are you doing the rest of the month? <laughs> like, what's going on there? You drinking enough water? You always on your phone? You sitting by a computer? Like, what is all the rest of going on in order to, you know, it's, it's so, it, you know, people have a tendency to think it's all about the practitioner helping you. But it's all about the practitioner kind of standing next to you in a small partnership while you do a whole bunch of things, you know? So that's that. So we also have this field that is part of the other, the other thing I'll say about electromagnetic frequency and its dysregulation, it's one of the leading, leading causes these days of cancer. So cancer is growing, you know, all the cancers are growing because one of the things that it does is it actually <clears throat> creates uh, like a free radical type situation in the body and these they're calcium ions and these ions break the walls of your cells and allows the toxicity to come in and start to de degradate the cell. So you also have that. So it's another big part, there's a lot of them, you know, parts of what the EMFs do, the electromagnetics do. Okay. I don't think that you realize that my school is about learning. And if you are in the place that says, I can go here, because this, what I'm doing today, is what I do when you come to class. And this is the deal. You are learning at this level every time you come. There is a lecture in the beginning that I am le leading you and helping you to understand the depth and the breadth of this body. If you're not able or willing or whatever, and this is not where you want to go, this is not the place for you. I'm, you know, it's like, this is not it, because this is where we go, is that we are in the depth of how this body works and how we get to this. So, of course, it's more focused when I'm doing it, but I just want, I, I got here and I'm like, you know, this is the deal, guys. This is where I am in this day after these 37 years. This is where I am to teach you how we really work and how, what it is, the path to, to healing. You, and your own personal journey in it. You know, this is my journey, that would be yours. The morphogenic field, this is the collective consciousness that circles the earth, and, but it's more than circling the earth, it's everywhere. I have a morphogenic field in that my cells are talking to my cells. There's the morphogenic field that we are all communicating with each other, and we call it the collective unconscious, but it's so much bigger than that, and so oftentimes that is a disturbance in it, is I feel disconnected from everything. So therefore, you know, so is somebody's disturbance in this field? It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Okay, no, we're not going there. We're not going to stages of health. I always have it in there, and I always think, no, I'm not going there. <laughs> so let me have, so I'll ask before I talk about school in particular. Anybody have any questions or thoughts or anything you want to share? No? Uh-uh. Everybody okay so far? Nobody's. Is everybody intimidated by <laughs> the the thought of even coming to this program? Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. So let me explain the program itself. Now I talked about all about our philosophy and a lot about what I teach and yada yada yada, a little dance this way and that way, but okay. So the program is, as I said, two years and two months long. And it meets, it starts this April, I think the last... 27th, one, April 20, 27th. Thank you, Jillian. Uh -huh. It starts April 27th, which is a Thursday. So class is always Thursday through Sunday, every other month. We start at 8.30 and we end around four, sometimes quarter to four, sometimes 4.15 lately, honestly. It used to be we used to get out early all the time, and now, bigger oh classes, God, mean bigger, longer, yeah. They're just like questions, and it's been so fun. Okay, so classes from about 8.30 is eight, not from, about. 
I'm kind of a stickler about starting on time. So it's eight, class starts at 8.30. We run until 4. You get them an hour and 15 for lunch. Okay? So you always get that. We have refrigerator and microwave. You can have lunch here. Many people leave. Some people's houses are really close. You can do whatever you want to do. Okay? So there is, there is that. Um, and there's almost always somebody staying for lunch. Um, so it meets every other month, 14 times. Just a few times over the 14 times, there's a little quiz at the beginning to see how you're doing. There's, you know, it's not like, you know, crazy. So the, the school is a 500-hour school. You are 435 hours in class. So there are 65 hours in outside work you have to do. So what, the way we set it up is your best way is five people in between, in the two months, you have to do work on, and they give you, they fill out a little teeny client review sheet, which we give you. It's like circle one to five if you liked it, and you know, that kind of thing. It's, a, it's just that kind of deal. So it's easy peasy. Those 65 review sheets have to be handed in by the time you graduate. And we make recommendation that you don't get behind. We have some people who are going to graduate who are scrambling. They were at 20 the other, you know, not too long ago. And that means 45 people have to come across their table. So the other piece about this is that, um, <clears throat> so we recommend that you do five in between each one and that you hand in your five sheets to whichever assistant is running the, that particular program, right? So that's how you stay up with this. But if you do five, that's great. If you do 10 or 20, because I've noticed that the ones in class who do more, like we have some people who have 130 already handed in, and Grace, what, what is, Chase has like 120 something? He's like at 150 at this point. Oh, is he really? Uh-huh. Yeah, so he is also one of the better students. Yes? Does it have to be no repeats? Can't do the same no, 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 you can totally do the same okay. person. You can totally do the same person. You can have the same people, but I also have to say that a little variety definitely helps. Mm -hmm. It definitely helps, but yes, you know, and so, and like I was saying, this guy Chase in, in Grace's class who's graduating has, and Grace has extra, many of them have extra, you know, in her class there's about three or four of them which is, you know, not the norm, so don't think you have to, but the more you do, the better you get. Let me tell you something. And Grace is good. Yes. I have to say that. She is super good. So, so is Jillian. These two are like, yes. <laughs> so anyway, um, so 435 in class, 65 out of class, okay? The other thing that we have you do, I think it's twice, isn't it twice? Do the student clinic? Three times. So over the two years, two months, we have, usually it's once a month, sometimes it's once every six weeks. It's about eight times a year. It's eight times, thank you, Grace, it's eight <laughs> times a year, is on a Saturday afternoon, we have a student clinic. Now, way, the way the student clinic looks is that <clears throat> the student does three people, okay? Grace does, arranges this, it's all the public. So we have the public comes in, and every, oh, the students, I'm here, Grace is here, we have another one of my longtime assistants is here, we are helping. Grace and I and Shannon are helping, and we are helping you and, and sort of mentoring you while you're working on somebody that you don't know working, which helps every one of the students said that when they do the student clinic, it makes them grow so much. You're here with me helping and everything. So you don't have to do every one, although the people, we have about two or three people that do do every one, and they are growing like leaps and bounds once again. So, it, but you have to do three over your two year, two month deal, three of them out of the 14. So um, you get the person, the three people that you see, you get three of your student clinic forms. Okay, so reviews. you get to have those three, like, there you go, one day, right? In one day. So, um, Grace, do you want to say anything about the clinic? Or Grace organizes it. She, people all contact her. She also will, you know, try to shake the tree for, for students to work the clinic. Um, 
So I think it's an hour treatment. Right. So the public comes in. Um, Lee helps uh, assign to which practitioner, mm -hmm. and then goes through a visual diagnosis. They spend an hour on your table, um, and then you have 15 minutes to change the sheet and wash your hands and get your client reviewed and get ready for the next one. Right. So every student that does this is really nervous, you know, when they come in, and very nervous, especially the first time. It's a nerve-wracking thing. But I'm there, and then you start working, and then you're in it. You know, you're just like, oh, yes, I'm, I'm in it, and I'm doing it. So it's all good. The other thing we have, so I personally think that, you know, we have one of the, the most supportive schools. So the other thing we have is Shannon and this other assistant, Janet, they do a, is it once a month? Is it once a month? About that. It's usually once a month that they do like from five to eight or I don't know, four to seven. In here, they have a practice session. So you can come and you can practice and, you, and there's all of the people from different classes and everybody's like totally embracing each other because they were where you are and all of that. And so you can, you, the learning, the questions, the working with both Shannon, Janet, and the other students, it is an opportunity to really help yourself, you know? Once again, one of you guys want to say anything about it? And you can do your client review sheets there too, which is part of your outside practice hours. So too. look at all so the ways you can get you those client review sheets done and learn and expand yourself, right? Because one thing is, is that if you do a client review sheet, say you do a client review sheet on your husband or your son, and they'll, they'll go, good, 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 and that's great. You do a client review sheet with one of your fellow students, you're going to get what, hopefully they'll give you the feedback. Do you know what I mean? Because feedback is what really makes you grow. You know, that's what makes you, that's what definitely makes you grow. So, there's that. Okay. <coughs> bless you. Bless you, bless you. There is a Facebook page. And that Facebook page, the, each group has its own Facebook page. And that is a way to communicate between each other. You also have everybody's email address and telephone number and all that kind of stuff. But, that it, but you can also interact between each other, ask questions, you know. And the other thing is, all of us check in on the Facebook page. The best thing, if you're asking us a question or telling us something like administratively wise, you should email us. Do not use the Facebook page or the Messenger because I never get to go on there. I don't go to the Messenger part. Jillian checks it. I don't know if Grace does. They check it. But best if you have any kind of, you know, if you're in class and there's anything going on, the best way to communicate with something, you know, administratively is to come is to come through the email rather than the Facebook. But the Facebook page is a great way to you know, interact and ask questions and post ideas and even if you saw something great or sometimes people post dissection videos and all, and, you know, all sorts of things. So that, that's a really good way to communicate, okay? You okay is, if you don't do Facebook? Yeah. I've never been on it. Never been on it. Don't even know okay. I've been on it. You can even do a fake profile don't and want not to be on it. No worries. <laughs> okay. Then you don't have to worry about that piece at all. Well, every every in every communication that we have from the school goes on that group, but you also get an email too. Okay. So you don't email, have to. We have we have, have several people that aren't on Facebook at right. all too. It used okay. to be a problem because that was the only way it went. All this stuff went out because <clears throat> I'll say the next piece is is that. Another way that this that the school is also very different is that we video, we video one of them is back there videoing every lecture and every demonstration, every lecture and every demonstration. So what happens is is that by the end of the week after you finish your Sunday, at least by the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, something by that week everything's up, and so we have how is that is it a Google Drive, I don't even know this anymore. It used to all be you got it through Facebook. Now I don't know what we do. Well, we're going to, it has been posted on private YouTube accounts, but we're going all in-house ourselves. So there will be a, a place that you can go um, that's not public at all, where you can access all of your videos, you can access all of your treatment pages and the slides, all of that, and you will have that for the rest of your life. Right. Mm -hmm. So Two. here's the So deal you can always go back. So so we're gonna have this way to go there. 
It's called SharePoint. It's on Microsoft. <laughs> okay, SharePoint. Microsoft. <laughs> Hello, thank you, God. See what I mean? Is that so? It was a private YouTube channel, and now it's all changing. And but here's the other deal. So every one of those videos and the demos are so labeled. Yes. And I always have to tell the story that my first assistant just videoed for eight hours and those poor people in group one you have to watch eight hours to try to find this place in it. Do you know what I mean? It was terrible. Anyway, they really do all of them. Grace, Jillian, Alicia, you know, there's another woman, Alicia, do a great job of labeling. So if you say, oh, I don't know how I would do the fibula, muscle energy, then Bang, you can go right in and find that. Okay? So there's that. And then Jillian was also saying this is that you will, before class starts, receive the week before, you will receive, probably in an email, the uh, you will have all the PowerPoint that I'm going to do, and you will have all of the treatment sheets. You so you print off, the, for sure you have to print the treatment sheets and bring the treatment sheets to the class. Many people print the PowerPoint, you know, all the slides I'm going to have. It's up to you. You can, however you want to do that. But you get them all, right? Right. And some people work digitally, too, so you can, you know, pull it up on Notability or, you know, different kinds of, um, and your iPad, too, and if you can write on your iPad with the treatment sheets, like, the reason why we like to say to print them out is so that you can make notes on it, any additional information, that kind of thing. But if you can use it digitally too, through an iPad or, or a, a notebook too, you're yeah. welcome to do that. Right. As long as you have them here in class. Yep. That's what you need. You need them here when you're in class. Don't care about the don't care about the slides, but a lot of people print up the slides, so they have all that together. Seriously. But I'm and weirdly second. enough, I would also say that a lot of times. You know, a lot of people print them up black and white, but there is a difference between really being able to see what we're showing you in a slide on, in color, if it's possible. But the other thing we have is, is that if you become a student, we give you a number for Office Mac. Depot. Depot. Yep. Somebody. You know, <laughs> and as a student, and you, as soon as you're a student in our school, you become a member of a student member of the American Massage Therapy Association, which we have, uh, we will send you, you know, email you, wouldn't we? We'd email you scanned what the card looks like. Yeah. And you get how much? 20% discount on all of your copies. I know anything you copy at Office Depot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once you come, once you come into us, that's another perk is that you're a student AMTA member, which I don't know what that lets you do. It lets you do something. I don't remember. It helps you with insurance also. You oh, are covered. Right. You are covered insurance. for anything that you do as associated with the school, um, too. So right. that's a wonderful it's a perk wonderful, as well, it's and a it's a free thing. membership too. It, so yeah. free membership for the two years and two months that you're in here. Yep. Got to say that. Okay, and. You know, people go, well, do I come every month? No, you come every other month. April, no May, yes June, no July, yes August. And I'll be here. I'm scheduled from now until I'm 120. I think. <laughs> Julian keeps doing that. Julian keeps going, and I've got class 11 scheduled out. And I'm like, oh my God, Julian. Okay, stop. It's my autonomic nervous system. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that right. I'm still working. That's that one that doesn't settle. <laughs> that's there right. you go. Yeah. What's the typical class size? The cost. Class, class size. size. Oh, class size. You know what? The last two classes have been at 20. Okay, basically 20. And um, there tends to be a, a small attrition rate and stuff. So class, uh, the class that's meeting this week, they're still at 20. Mm -hmm. And um, the class that met two weeks ago, they're at seven. They're at 18, 17, 17, 18, 17, 18 yep. and they started at 20, and they're halfway through. Um, I've had classes, my first class started at 16 and graduated 15 people. I've had a class at 14, and now the class is at 20. I have no idea. We have, we have absolutely no idea how big this class will be. But the max we can have with the number of tables is, um, <clears throat> we can, what do we 24. 24. 24. We can have 24. And let me also tell you something. Let me just say this, is that I am the only school that has all electric tables. And when you start working, let me share something with you. Big. Big. It's huge, isn't it? It's huge. 
to have electric tables. I just kept reinvesting the money into this place as opposed to, you know, going um, not. <laughs> as opposed to having all these broken down massage tables we had. So this is just a great classroom. It is great. The people are great. Okay, am I missing something? About that stuff? I think we're good. Yeah. Yes. So I'm an LMT already. Oh, are you? Yes. Um, okay, so, so let me so let me say a few things. Okay, okay. for one thing is is that <coughs> this is not massage. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got to tell you, this is like so far from massage. I mean, I started as a massage therapist mm -hmm. too, so it's very far from massage. Okay, so it'll blow your mind. Like the first one should be easy for you. The first mm -hmm. module should well. The actual work work should be easy for you. And then it completely changes. In module two, we're on a whole new path. Um, so, yes, we can give you cert cert uh, certificates um, with you, your modules. You get it you every module. That. You get okay. a certificate so every module. module. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you get... And oh. also Okay, and so yes, so you'll get it, you'll get the certificate, and you can turn that in absolutely for your continuing ad and all that stuff. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. absolutely. Do you know yes. how many per module? Thirty-two. Or... Thirty-two. Per module? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's four days. Oh it's four, it's four days. days. One weekend. It's four days. Exactly. Don't have to worry about it ever. <laughs> right. I know. Find out what they need from us because the yeah. PTs accepted the yeah. PTs accepted me uh, have accepted me and my stuff a couple of times, but you might need to get something so right. that and then maybe and we've got all of it. We've got we've got all of it lined out, but we just need the disc the the actual where we need to send it to do that. We've done different individual module modules and workshops that we've sent in so that people can get PT things, but. For our whole entire program, that was something. That's something that we need to um, do. But I can send it per module, even too. So yeah, we're yes, all, we're, we're, all all board, we're all on board. We're all on board with helping you get what you need. That's amazing. Yeah, Thanks. that's why you know you don't already, you don't have to. Here's the deal: you do not have to already be in the field of this. To the, I was not. Grace was, was not. not. She was not. They were was not. I was, but they weren't. Okay, <laughs> so you don't have to be in the field. Okay, so and there's some unlearning that's going to have to happen within within the field people, mm -hmm. but the field people are used to touching somebody. So there's yeah. anatomy that they already have a little clue into. There's anatomy, and you know muscle energy. So that's a big that's a big like big plus. But the other thing is is that this is geared towards all of it and a whole unknown structure. But if you do study some of your anatomy and really, you know, look at the slides and we recommend Netter, you know, Netter is the, is the it's an atlas of anatomy. Um, and so recommending that you get that book and stuff like that. So once you apply, once you apply, and I'll tell you the cost and everything, once you apply, then there's a welcome letter. And once you, is it after you put your deposit down that we send you the recommended book? Recommended book list. Recommended book list and all sorts of things. So you're going to get stuff from us at the stages. And we even have it all written down, which I'll actually probably let Jillian say all this stuff. But, okay, so let's talk cost. So the cost is this, is that there is a deposit before class starts. And we'd like to have the deposit two weeks before class starts. So wherever that is, the first, the week of... Um, We've got it. We've got a date on that. The, uh, it's on, on here. That. Yeah. Do you have a date on that? So... I think we, it's like the 13th ask, or something. We really, try, we really ask... Oh, all right. Well, anyway, Jillian will give this out. It's all next up. So you don't have to write down what it is I'm saying. Okay? So we'll... Because... These two are so dang organized. <laughs> <laughs> I was told there's a possibility of just paying like $800 per module. Somebody told you that. Somebody did tell me that. Who told you that? Probably. Probably great. <laughs> okay. Possibility. Uh, there is a possibility. We yeah. have a huge tax bill that's coming. Due, okay. So. so, okay. So you just yeah. talk to us. Okay. So, but basically for everybody, is what it is, is it is, there's a $1,400 deposit before you start class, okay? And then when you start class, each time you, each time we meet, including that first time, is $700. So every other month it's $700. And so 
It is, and if you pay the whole thing off at once, like you do it at once, there's 10% off. So we have 10% off if you pay the whole thing off, like right before you start or right then, you know. Before, first day. First day. We'll take it then too. Until the first, first day. Yeah. yeah. Or, or the, not, don't wait until the first day yeah. because you're not enrolled. If right. You're not, you're not enrolled, enrolled without the deposit. Until right. Until we get something from you. Until we get a little... So we get a little moolah from you, all right? So there is that. So there is a 10% off if you pay the whole thing in total. The whole thing for the two years and two months is 11200 mm -hmm. okay? I just like to say this because this is, I gotta say this. The massage school that has a 500 hour program that will remain nameless, the one that's here in Tulsa, their 500 hour program for a very basic massage is 16000 so we're, you're, you will, if you take this, it will blow your mind. It will blow the top of your head off at the information and the way to look at the body and the way to see how we work is so uh, unbelievable. So this, uh, this kind of information is just not put together anywhere else like this. You know, I've been through, you know, I've had, me personally, my personal education, I have been through so much and have integrated so much together that, but it's not integration like, here's a little bit of this and a little bit of this. It is integrated together on how we truly work, what really is going on in here, and what is the way I need to come and talk to this system in order to help this system come back to health. That is where it's at. But it is actually a, quite an intelligent training as well as a training that teaches you how to touch people and teaches you how to come in and begin to do the work in a very different way that really helps the body find its own ways to release. It's just, it's just, I mean, you know, I have to do this. It's like I step to the side and I look and I'm like, I'm stunned at what this has evolved into. Even in the years, now Jillian was in class four and it's yes. different even now yeah. for here for class eight. And class one, oh my gosh, just like that was eons ago. But besides that, I mean, I've been teaching for 34 years, 33, 34 years I've been teaching, but it all sort of came together in the school. Something, something happened that forced me to put together the program, and that has been life-changing and mind-blowing to me. I'm like my own witness. Like, I'm a witness to this thing that's happening. All I am is the steward and the, the channel of this work. That's what I am happily and I love it and I'm excited about it and you get it every time I teach so I teach just like I am here today you guys there's no difference the intensities here the excitements here the laugh you know we laugh we sing and, you, know, <laughs> you know all that stuff goes on and we dance a little all that stuff goes on in class and stuff like that so um, what I miss maybe talk about um once they get the 500 hours, what the next steps are if they don't have an LMT or a PT license, that kind of thing. Okay. So in order, you get a massage license. So even though we're body work, you end up getting a massage license. And how, what happens is, is with our 500 hour certificate, which all the parts have to be done for you to get that, and then there is a national test. It has nothing to do with us. It's a national test called the MBLEX. And it's just like it sounds, big M, big Blex, B-L-E-X. <laughs> and then once you pass that, so in order to do the Mblex, first of all, it takes outside study once you're getting way down there, okay? And there's some apps, we have them up. There's some apps and stuff like that that you can do these tests and study with, all right? And we have, out of all the students who have taken the Mblex, we have a really high percentage of people passing on the first time. A high, high percentage actually. We've only had two people not make it the first time. They made it, one of them made it the second, and the other one is just like mortified and hiding in her house. <laughs> what, what, what? Do it again, do it again. Just do it again. Yeah. I mean, don't take it so seriously. So, anyway, so with those two things, your $500 certificate, your passing the Mblex, you then go to the state. And you, uh, Jillian, what yeah, do you, what just do you did have? it. <laughs> you go to the state and you um, give them all of your documentation. You also have to pass a background um, check too. And some states have um, fingerprints that you have to, to. Did you have to fingerprint? I did for my Colorado license. 
You didn't for here? No. When I got mine here, I did. But they do a background check. They did a background check here, right. but they didn't do a background check there. They did a... Well, if they did your fingerprints, yeah. they did something. They did they something. Looked something. They looked for something. They looked for something. They looked for something. And then um, it was $55 to get my three, two-year license here, I want to say, and... Um, two hundred dollars to get one in Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> so, so there's so it's different for each, but that MPLEX, MPLEX you can take to any state. Right. And that MPLEX and this five hundred hour program can certificate go anywhere. can go anywhere. Can go anywhere. Yeah. So your five hundred hour, your MPLEX passing, you can move to Nebraska. You're good to go. Yeah. You just have to go take all of that documentation and take it to the, the licensing to board. The licensing board, whether sometimes it's a city licensing board and sometimes it's a state. When I moved here, it was a city and now it's a state. It changed about 10, 12 years ago or something. So now it's the state. So, all righty. And we are always, help, I mean, there to help you. And Absolutely. Jillian sends the transcripts. You know, to the Emblex, once you've graduated and everything's in, she'll send your stuff to the Emblex people when you request it, when you're ready, and she'll she'll do that. Send your transcript, and there you go. Okay? Yep. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, did I miss anything about school? It's loads of fun, though. <laughs> it is loads of fun. It's loads of and fun. And every, every module would be like, what? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And yeah. then you start working and you're like, what? That's crazy. It works. Yeah. It works. I can't believe it Every, works. Yeah. I, this might not have anything to do with That's okay. We love those. Or anything. But I saw that you guys um, are associated with Ingram Russia. Oh, so, so. I've done school. it once and then she sold it. And to me. Was like, to me. She yeah. sold Where did it. Where did it go? She, she sold it to <laughs> me. I, know. I saw you post about it and I sent it to a few people that did it with me and I was like, I found it. <laughs> Good. Good. So, so obviously, well not obviously, I have two businesses. I have this school, Ankrum Institute, and then in the corner of this same strip mall we have Ankrum, we call it Annex. Ankrum Annex, which is the private practice which Jillian, Grace, and I all have a private practice, as well as another woman, Kristen, have a private practice in there. So we're all practicing just down the pike. And there was a woman who had this system called the Rasha, and Rasha is a quantum sound therapy system that has plasma scalar, which probably doesn't help anybody, scalar technology. You can look up the Rasha, R-A-S-H-A, and it is... It's just off the charts. It is an energy system through sound and vibration, through, you know, and it quantum sound and vibration that, that is working on healing things within the consciousness layers. And it is amazing. And it works, I mean, it depends on where you're at as to where it's at, because the Rasha itself, it's this, you're sitting in a chair, you have earphones on, and you're laying in this chair, and it has some vibration coming through the pad in the chair, and the sound is coming in through the earphones that are happening, healing sounds. And there are programs, you know, there's programs from, most of them are like 15 minutes long, and there's a few that are like an hour long programs. It all, so it's working anything from working on repairing your DNA to your sh to really balancing chakras to taking you know um, to, to working with your parasympathetics, elevating your parasympathetics to working on these other consciousness layers. And then there's all these programs that are called miasmas and the miasmas are the symptomology stuff which is anything from having toxicity, heart stuff, cancer, autoimmune stuff, to, you know, it's, it's working. You have to pro put the program in to have this do this. It's also like you can work on candida. Did I say that? Candida. <laughs> it has stuff for, like, foggy brain and heart stuff and diabetes stuff and ADD and autism and Parkinson's. It has all of these programs for all of these different types of miasmas. We've got pages of miasmas. And so you 
tend to work a couple of programs in a, at the, you know, in a row. One is to like open your system to get it ready, like open the consciousness to get it ready to have the next layers. And then there's integrative programs. So it's, it's off the charts. It really is. It's like amazing. So I'm glad you found it and heard that. Yeah, Taylor, for whatever her reasons, I don't know what they all are, Taylor was selling it and I was like, hey, maybe I should get it. And so I did. So it's over there. Okay. It's over there. Thank you. You're so welcome. Monday through Thursdays. Yeah. It's it's definitely over there. Well, I actually, we're going to probably do it Monday through Fridays, but right now we've got it Monday through Thursday and we do, you know, a 45 minute or an hour thing. As long as the program's not the hour-long program, when you do the 45 minute to an hour, it's like 150. Okay? So, anybody else? Anybody? Yes? Are there any kind of acceptance process or requirements? Okay. So, the, that's a really, really, really good question. So, you know, it used to be that I said that there's a certain level of maturity right, and willingness to study and a, you know, and a desire to learn and stuff. But it's a sophisticated program. So we have to know that the person who is applying has that, you know, has that level of being able to study and take in this, I mean, like what I just did. In, so let me just say that the format of class looks like this. It is not the first class. The first module is the module of like information. That first module is you are here and I am setting the principles up. So that first day is all the principles and then we do some body reading with each other to start to learn how to see. And uh, it's really fun actually, the body yeah. reading, everybody loves it. And um, so we're, we're setting everything up in the first module and then we do teach how to do a particular, this is your one routine you're going to get, is there's a particular routine that's soft tissue that we do that's sort of muscle and fascia that we do that we teach you that one so you have something that you can leave and actually do some work with, okay? And so it's a very heady module, the first one. Most of the module, the rest of the modules, well I shouldn't say the rest because there's a couple of other things, is that the mo most of the other modules, we come in on Thursday morning, I give the lecture on whatever it is. So whatever is here, module two is the leg, foot, knee. So we do the slides for the lower leg and foot first, and then we learn the techniques for that. So you're going to get the lecture and the anatomy and the talk on the, on the topic Thursday morning. Okay, and then we start teaching the techniques over the next couple days. When we finish the techniques for that body part, we then go into cranial sacral. We then go into your cranial sacral. So whatever's left of the time, because cranial sacral through the 14 modules, we have it planned out so that it can be like we only get this far this time and then we get this much that. So we have it that it's flexible in the cranial so that we can make sure that we finish whatever the structural portion. Structural portion. Thank you, Jillian. You're welcome. Whatever the structural portion is. Okay, so there's that. So the modules look like that. Me giving anatomy, standing up here, to me or Shannon giving the anatomy and then after we do that, of course, there's breaks, and then yeah, then we get somebody. We get an assistant on the table, and the assistant um, we show the demo while it's being filmed, and then you trade with partners. Mm -hmm. That's how that works. So there has to be a level of being able to take in that in kind of information. It's overwhelming for everybody. Trust me, everybody's overwhelmed. As one student said, it's like drinking from a fire hose. It is. But then you go home, you watch it again, and then it starts to, at some point in the program, at about two-thirds of the way through, there's a big, like, oh, my God, I get it now. It's the weirdest thing. So don't give up before that, man. <laughs> really, because a lot of people are like, I'm not getting it. I don't think I should stay. Everybody goes through that, too. And we're like, no, no. Then I ask the class, so how many of you don't really get it? And you get every hand up. <laughs> but, it's, but something then happens where there's a big, like, clunk. Isn't there, Grace? <laughs> a big clunk, and you're like, wow. So it really just, 
the, 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 our, our deal about accepting people is, is that we just don't blanketly accept and actually if you're too young it's too much for you definitely there's a there's a level of sophistication that needs to happen with it yeah, yeah. so there's a lot of um, cranial sacral um, teaching it sounds like it's like a key, a yeah. key thing yeah and um, so do you get a, a cranial sacral certification is that or is that part of the massage or is that like not even a thing no, it is, it is a thing-ish. Ish. Ish. Yeah. It is a thing-ish. Well, you'll just get it as part of the 500 hours. Sure. You won't get a separate cranial sacral certification. It'll be just part of the 500 hours. If somebody were to come in, we had this, but it won't. It doesn't work anymore. We we found it that we tried it once. We're always willing to try things, and so we tried once just to have somebody take only the cranial sacral portion. But the problem is, we never know. Sometimes we still need part of Saturday for the structural part. We were mm -hmm. we, we always hold like a loose schedule in our minds, but then part of Saturday ends up getting taken with the last part of the femur or something like that and so we start cranial later so if you think you're all we used to think okay every Saturday Sunday would be cranial for this person that and the other thing is in order to get a license you need 500 hours mm. so if you just did the, somebody just did the cranial and they came out with whatever that is I don't know they came out with like say 200 hours that's not enough to get a license this is some, you have to have some program that's really going to take you to the 500 hour. You really, that, when you come out and you get your license and you're doing body work, you are, the cranial sacral work is so integrated into it that you are doing that as well. Every. <laughs> well, here's the deal, is you can do an entire session without doing any cranial. You can do a body work session without doing any cranial. You can do a cranial session without doing any body work. Mm -hmm. Treatment plan is in the body. Yes. Treatment plan is in the body. So you get to think, you get to you get to learn how to think that way. Do you know what I mean? Like looking at the different bodies and we go through on this first module, we also go through the history taking. <clears throat> we have a we have a thing where we go through how I take a history and what it means and how you can use the history taking as part of the assessment of what this person would need as their beginning treatments and stuff like that. Okay? So you do learn that. And you also learn to uh, some of there's a few definitely safe cranial integrative type techniques to do at the end of a session that you've done structural in order to help the body take the whole thing in. And then there's cranial where you're sitting for a longer period of time and you're actually doing a cranial session, okay? So we sort of teach you that and show you all the different ways. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. No, I'm glad, it's a good question. Yeah? About how often do you have these classes? Is it like not another one until two years, or do you? Oh start no 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 offset oh no them? no no that's a re that's a, those are really good questions, Julie. Uh, no, we usually start one a year. Okay. So we have one in April. Weirdly, this year, to twenty two or last year, twenty twenty two, we started one in January and one in October. But we never know. You know, we had I forget what how it was going to be, but we had one year where we were going to do another one, and it was like no, no, that wasn't right. So we know April in 2023. We have no idea if we're going to catch one in November or something like that. This because here's the deal: is we have two, we have three classes going. One class is graduating in March. Then we add the the group eight in April. That makes three classes going again, and so we have this every other month these three classes sort of doing that staggery thing that they do and so but here's the thing if we start getting interest at the end of the summer and into the fall then we'll think about another one but if not then we'd start i don't know when group six graduates oh yeah yeah i want to say march that. of 2024 yeah group six graduates march our next group that graduates group 
a year after Grace's, March of 2024, so we'll have three. If we start another one in 2023, that means we have four going, and that means I'm ready to shoot myself. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> no, we can't have that. You know, yeah. I, you know, I still see clients, so and run the offices and yeah. do all this stuff. Thank God they do their thing. Oh my mm. gosh. So, um, yeah. So usually it's one a year. It's it's been one a year. Yeah. Is it possible to hurt someone or do damage if you make if you mess up with these techniques? Well, it's always possible. My God, it's possible for somebody who's been doing it to mess up, and we do mess up. And then what happens is is that you try to unmess it. I mean, so that would be no matter what you were learning. I mean, if you went to be a PT or you went to be a chiropractor or you went to be anything, you can mess people up in what you're learning. It just that just is the way. So we try to teach you safely, of course, and that's why we love to have you come to the practice sessions and to the student clinics and do all of that stuff so that you can learn how to be in the body in the right way and stuff. But that's always a possibility. But here's the other fun thing. Oh my goodness, once you're in school, there's lots of assistants. See, you only see us three, but there's, there's all these other assistants. There's us over there. You call, you go, oh my goodness, what do I do? And then we help you. But that is, but that is definitely, you know, a possibility. But you don't want to sit in that place like, oh, I'm going to hurt somebody because here, it, 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 it's like, you know, it's just part of the nature of learning how to do something like this. It is part of it. But there's all this support to tell you how to help you get somebody through it and what to do. Okay. Yeah. No, sure. On the 65. People, the 65 hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, what's 65? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Okay, I'm with um, you. I did. If you went to every student clinic, right, and you worked on all your family members, so I don't know about everybody else, but it seems that most of the people I know, this is kind of crazy and out there for them. Do right. you have, how do you get those people? Well, you have to begin to believe in it. Okay. You know what I mean? You have to talk in a way that says, wow. This is something so exciting that I'm doing. I'd love for you to experience this. Versus, you know, I'm doing something and it's really kind of different. You know what I'm saying is, is if I went up to you and I said to you, wow, I am learning this stuff that's just like will blow your mind. It's so amazing. Will you let me try this? Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's also, also in how you put it out there. Yeah, Grace? I will say my dad is not hugely open-minded. He's turning 80 next month. Mean, God bless him. And I started class, and he, oh, this hurts. And, hey, will you let me work on you? And it's just that simple. Can I work on you? Can I attempt to help you? Because I'm a student. You know, I'm going to try my best. And at this point, he's like, honey, I think you've taken 10 years off of me. And yeah. anytime he's got something, he's like, can, can, can I get on your table? Right. right. So it okay. becomes, you know, it's it's how you approach it, how you put it out there. You know, I know that, well, Jillian has a pretty big following on Facebook, so she put it out there and said, I need people. And I so did. I'm like, I'm learning this cool new thing, and I need people to practice with because I need 65 hours worth of practice. Would you be willing to come? And, and I, right then I got 30 people that signed up, yeah. like that said, yes, please. Yeah. I do so. Oh, do you? Brilliant. Oh, no, like, brilliant. Oh, my God. Don't, Julie, don't be afraid to, like, own it. Yeah. No, yeah. own it. Yeah. Own it. And just say, I'm pra I need to practice. And I just That's learned, right. I just learned about the lower leg. And, oh, my goodness, you guys don't even know what's going on with your fibula. I could help. Okay. Maybe. Right. I'd love the opportunity to try. Yeah, I'd like to try. Yeah, so it's you. It's how you put it out there. If I put it out there, I'm not sure and all that stuff, then, then That's, yep. people are not going to take you up on it. But if you come out there and you're like, Wow, this is I'm like blown away. It's amazing. Let me try it. And then, you know, then you've got a lot of then you've got a lot of people. You know, the other thing I wanted to say that's in the whole training that also is like makes us so fun and exciting. I love this. Is that a couple things. One is like group the third module, which is the next module for group 7, mm -hmm. is that we do a trauma I do a trauma talk about what trauma does in the body and the looks of trauma and all that kind of stuff. So that's a, a kind of an amazing thing. And then we have where we also have one of the modules, whatever, who cares what number, is we teach embryology. Mm -hmm. 
So we teach embryo, you get embryology for two days, and then the third day of the module is pregnancy, pregnancy and the fourth day is pediatrics. So there is pregnancy and pediatrics, just a day of each, where I teach each of those days. I don't teach the embryology, I teach the other two days. And then we also bring in a pregnant woman and probably a couple of babies for me to work on. And, and what also happens is throughout the class there are times when somebody will call me with a child that's really in need and I will work a baby in front of class and stuff like that. So class is here as witness to watching me work on the baby and, and those kinds of things. So it's quite... Uh, I don't know what it is because I'm over here doing it and they're the ones watching it and I always apologize for using their time but it's a huge know. learning to be able to watch her do uh, work on people whether it's yeah. they're pregnant or not or a baby, a baby or amazing kinds yeah. of things yeah. incredible learning yeah so it happens here and there through the training I usually do it on the morning or the first thing in the morning and get everybody in and do that kind of thing but but I believe that embryology needs to be part of the training because the body is always I'm going to say it this way and then I'll say a sentence after it or 12 mm -hmm. is that there is something called the embryological imperative meaning that my body is always operating working on how I developed so and especially in injuries your body actually starts to spiral into embryologically how you developed okay so there's all sorts of pieces to this embryological development that that the way it works in the body is also parts that make why you're doing certain things in certain ways and it oh my I, there's just something about it that elevates your ability to connect to the system that you're working on because because uh, my and yours and everybody's and the way you developed embryologically is always playing out inside of you it's always going on inside of you and so it's quite an amazing thing and I think it's such an important piece for you to understand how this worked and how it came together so that's another one of those two days where you're just sitting on your can <laughs> sort of listening to a lecture from Shannon who's one of the other assistants here so that is, so we have embryology. And then the last class, the 14th module, has business and ethics and stuff like that. There's a party at my house the last night, <laughs> Saturday night, before the half day Sunday. Then we have a little, we have a little graduation that happens on the 14th module on Sunday at lunchtime where we get cake and the families can all come and do all that kind of stuff. So that's all comes down the pike. But I just want to tell you that we also do the embryology and the pregnancy and the pediatrics within the training as well. Yes. Anything else? It's all so exciting. Oh my gosh. I, 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 you know, seriously, how long have I been doing this? I mean, like seriously doing this, more longer than half of my life. And um, I'm still excited about it, and I still have this, this unbelievable learning that happens all the time. I'm always learning and always having ahas. That's why every class is different, is because my, my tr both treatment room and classroom is a petri dish for me in that I'm always learning and, and having ahas all the time. It's very exciting. And I know that I don't know, you know? I know that I don't know. So, and that's super fun. Anyway. Takes though. Doesn't that take the pressure off? If I tell you the treatment plants in the body, so somebody comes in and they have back pain, and you you're 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 like, oh, okay, what do I do for back pain? What do I do? What do I know how to do for back pain? And you stop doing that and you go, oh, okay, treatment plan is the body. I just have to put my hands on, and then that body is going to tell me where the treatment plan is. And you're like, oh, that was easy. Phew. Kidneys. Oh, okay. <laughs> so all you got to do is go right there. The kidneys. Oh, right. kidneys. Yes. So, but anyway, it does take the onus off when you learn how to be able to read what the body is saying, and that is super fun, super fun. But it takes the process of the two. Two. It takes the process of the whole time, because you're through through the the. One part of the, the you know, the, the, the training as you're going, you're like, I don't know how to get that, I don't know how to read that treatment plan, I don't know how she does it, I don't know. But then, you know, all of a sudden it starts to really come in for you after a while. So you have to go through the I don't know stage, or I don't know what I'm doing stage for a while, and then it comes in. So. So when you're in school and you're working on people, like if I'm traveling to visit family, 
Mm -hmm. My, it's in, a, in another state. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to work on that? Sure. Okay, Get them on the work. bed. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Seriously, mm -hmm. put them on the bed. You're going to find how much you want your table. Yeah. Home. <laughs> but we've all done that. Well, maybe I'll start traveling in a car. I don't know. You, who knows? Flying, and take a and, and take a <laughs> massage table with you. But yeah, you know, you're okay. You're okay yeah. if you do that. You're just covered. You're you're covered under the the MTA is a national organization, okay. so it's not like located mm -hmm. limited to Oklahoma. But then once you're licensed, you have to be licensed in any state that you work. If you are going to work work, if you go work on your mom, yeah. Hello. Oh. Yes, you're fine, but if you're going to work work and start and to make money. a living and yeah. collect money, then yeah. you need to license okay. up there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's if you want to work on your mom. <laughs> <laughs> you never I know. I want to work on my mom. I'm not going to have to work on her. Well, I've worked on her mom, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, if I have, you can't. You know what I mean? I've worked on her mom. Not for a few years, but I used yeah. to. Yeah, and when she Shannon came. has too. Oh, Shannon has? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. There you go. All right. Anything else? Anybody Anybody else? No? We go through the next steps. Oh, this. Oh, this. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> or you could just pass it out. That's good too. I thought I would pass it yeah, out. Yeah, great. But uh, but I'll read it first, and then I'll pass it out so that you'll definitely have it. So the next steps are, is that once you submit your application for enrollment, and she has, um, she being Jillian, has the the um, the the, what, the link. The link. Yeah. Thanks. For the website where you need to go. I suck. Oh my god, I couldn't tell you anything in the body, but that, the, except for the muscles of the, what the names are in the forum. Okay, in the number two, after you after you put in your application, then you're going to receive a welcome email. Within seven days, we're going to send you something that says welcome. We're so glad you're with us, and then it has all the same. $700 every time you, it has all the information and stuff. Your official enrollment is dependent upon receipt of, this is number three, of your $1,400 deposit, and you can, which can be made by check, cash, or there's also a link there for how you can put your deposit, uh, which is two weeks prior to the start, and if you have a problem with that, you just let us know, you just gotta talk to us. Everything is about in this, in this, in this training is, talk to me. You know, you got to talk to one of us. You can't just, like, have something going on, not talk to us, and then all of a sudden you decide, well, because I didn't say it, I'm going to drop out. Or you got to talk, just talk to us. And we, we are so willing to work with you, it's amazing. Number four, once we receive your application and deposit, you will begin receiving information from us, including a recommended book list, links to videos about basic anatomical terms. That's nice. Instructions on how to join our private Facebook group, except for you, which you don't have to do. Sorry. No, there's no sorry. Don't be sorry. You get to choose. I'm it's fine. I'm very proud that I've never been on Facebook. Good for oh, you. Good. good for you. So. And number five, a week prior to starting module one, you will receive a link. So we put it on Facebook and we send it to you. We email it to you. Uh, you will receive a link to download the slides and treatment pages for that module. Number six, a $700 payment for Module 1 is due at the start of the module, which would be April 27, 2023. If there's any questions or anything, we have the email address at the bottom, and we have how you can contact us by phone. That's the phone number for the school. Okay? So. <clears throat> yeah? So you have all these people, you know, graduating. And is there, like, millions of body workers in Tulsa? There's not enough. There's, not, There's enough. not enough. We are. A lot of people are hired before we graduate. Oh my God, we get yeah. things like, can we have one of your graduates come work for us and All stuff like this. You know, I had somebody out of group two say, oh, stop teaching because there's just, you know, there, there'll be too many. And here's the deal is, there could never be enough. Okay, because, because they're all like working or they all like go places? Both. 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 Like, what is that normal? Well, first of all, oh, like, I want to say this, for, or the, I no, huh. say this yeah. for people on Facebook and people in this thing is, is that, okay, so I traveled to get my big, a lot of my education, almost all of my education after I graduated from massage school, I traveled for. I did a year in England going every three weeks over from Chicago to, to London. So, and spent a week in England 
doing biodynamic cranial, and then I went 12 times. So I know the travel. And I have to tell you guys that we in our program have people that come from, we have somebody in the program coming from Las Vegas, Chicago, we've had Santa Fe, St. George, and Texas. Texas loves me. <laughs> we have Texas from Houston and Midland and Dallas and El Paso, El Paso and I, I don't know where Delina and Nona are from, but not Midland, somewhere else. I, I'm telling you, Texas loves me. I love Texas. <laughs> Go Texas. Okay. So anyway, so they come from all over. So I do want you to know that. And there's, we have lists of Airbnbs like right around the school and stuff. So it's easy to do that. So people come from all over to take this training. And they, you know, arrive Wednesday, leave Sunday, night, whatever. Okay, that being said, people are hurting. People are hurting so badly that if I decided I wanted to work from 8 in the morning till midnight, I'd have clients mm -hmm. from 8 until, see, look at this, mm -hmm. from 8 until the morning until midnight. So there is no... The only thing that gets in the way of somebody making a practice that you can make a living at is yourself. Yep. It's just, there, there is no question about it. And we put you on, when you've graduated and you're licensed, you then get onto our website. You're listed on our website as Ancrum Institute Practitioners. And if you're on Facebook, I would pe give people the updates and heads up on, I'm in school at Ancrum Institute and I'm learning this amazing body work. Whatever you're connected to, your Instagram, your whatever, whatever you do, is that I would put it out there and say, I am doing this. And, you know, and I'm and get bodies to practice, and then once you've graduated, say, oh my gosh, I'm opening a practice, and I'm ready to go, guys, and you will have a practice. Seriously. The people I you've been practicing to on, too, during There's that, no question. the 65-hour people that you've been practicing on, too, as you're getting ready to graduate, say, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Just so you know, once I've graduated, this will be my rate. So you set up expectations beforehand, and then right. you start to doing that, and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't, that's amazing, because they'll have seen How much the changes and things that they and have. The, I mean, it's... And the other piece is, is that you help somebody, and they are only too happy to tell. Absolutely. That commercial Absolutely. That says, you tell two friends, and they tell two friends. Remember how and that, so that's on, and us. so on. That's probably yeah. from when we were kids, Kathy. It's <laughs> that one that goes, and they tell two friends, and they tell two friends. Well, the deal is that happens. It does happen. That yes. is so crazy how many people tell. I will say I went to an osteopath uh, for manipulative medicine uh, for years, and it helped, but I always had to go back. Right. I went to chiropractors for years. I went to massage therapists for years. But when I came for this, this I knew 